G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, this is not what I thought was going to happen. I did think that we were going to probably go sideways for a bit and that maybe the Coinbase IPO would be the spark. Seems like the spark came a little bit earlier. I mean, it is the 14th today, but it's tomorrow, uh, US time that the IPO starts and the market is just absolutely on fire at the moment. I mean, it's yeah, it's jumped substantially. We were struggling to really get above 59,000 and now we're nearly at 64,000. Uh, for Bitcoin, Ethereum's nearly at sort of 2,400, not too far off. I mean, coins are just going off absolutely all over the place. Now, just one thing we need to keep in mind, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but again, for me, I've always got, if this happens, that's my plan. And if that doesn't happen, the complete opposite happens, then this is my plan. And really, my plan doesn't change at the moment because I haven't bought anything for a while. I've been paying other bills. So we just need to remember this could be the buy the rumor, sell the news. So everyone's buying this, and then tomorrow, all of a sudden, there's a big dump following the Coinbase IPO. Now, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I don't want to throw shade on anything, but it's a possibility. People might pump this up, and then tomorrow, they all just quickly sell off to make a quick profit. It is something that could happen. I don't think that's what's going to happen, but just beware. Today, you might be buying into the pump, and then tomorrow, you're going to be left you know, in the red a little bit. But again, look, if you've been in this space for more than a couple of weeks, particularly if you've been in for a couple of months or a year or more, then you're absolutely laughing. I mean, there's not too many things that aren't at all time highs. Litecoin's not, still got to get to 360 something. So that says something. And there's a number of other coins that aren't at their old all time highs yet. But a lot of coins are in saying that. I mean, look, XRP is just flying. I'm now at that point where I'm like, you know, did I make the right decision in selling my XRP? At the time, I sold it at the lowest point, so I regret that. That that did kind of hurt, but the money I took from the XRP certainly has made me a lot of money, and I don't know if I'd made have made the same amount of money by sitting it in XRP at the moment. So again, I'll check. I had a look at the charts the other day. It was above its old Bitcoin place, so I'll have to have a look at that. If it's going to hold, then I'll probably start deploying more funds into XRP. But at the moment, I'm not going to chase this. I mean, this is all. There's too much green here at the moment. I'm happy to sit back and just you know wait for some kind of correction in the market or just in any certain coins I'm looking at anyway. But look, this is fantastic. Not that long ago, like I'm talking only maybe 20 minutes, half an hour ago, this was 2.266 trillion dollars. So, you know, it added basically 30 billion dollars in yeah minutes. Literally only minutes. I mean, Bitcoin dominance. So look at this. Bitcoin's moving, but its dominance is lowering. This is literally starting to look like a repeat of 2017. Now, will it play out exactly the same as 2017? No, I completely doubt that. Uh, but again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But it is playing out something similar at the moment. But what we need to have a look at is because it's actually outperformed 2017. It's somewhere between 2013 bull run and the 2017 bull run. So are we going to have a midpoint like Bitcoin did back in 2017? Uh, so we'll have a look at that shortly where it basically pumped up, had a bit of a bear market inside it, and then had a second big pump. Or is it going to be more like 2017 where it's just one big sort of continuous, you know, road upwards? It didn't. It did have sell-offs, don't get me wrong, but it didn't have the major one that 2013 had. So yeah, that dominance, I mean, yeah, we are nearly down below 50% dominance. You know, is this going to spark back up now that Bitcoin's got over? Or is this just, you know, people are going to be piling into the altcoin space, you know, getting ready for, again, what we call the real altcoin season. You know, if you think altcoins have done well now, and don't get me wrong, plenty have, they've 10x, 20x, 30x, when the dominance drops below 50%, the Bitcoin dominance, and stays below 50%, I mean, you're going to see things that you just, you know, if you haven't been in this space before, you really aren't going to be able to wrap your heads around it. You're going to see your money in some coins, not all coins, and please, again, never financial advice, but some of these coins, they will double and triple their entire value in a week. 
sometimes in a day or two they'll just they'll go absolutely berserk not so much these really really big ones at the top they won't do that they will most likely double and triple over like you know a couple of weeks to a month or two if they repeat history but some of the smaller coins down the bottom i mean i'm not kidding they will literally double and triple their value in a matter of like a couple of days to a week and they'll probably do that a couple of times over this last part of this you know altcoin season that we're going to have so you know strap yourselves in and be prepared but also be prepared for some really big dumps because that's what's going to happen that some coins are going to pump right up and then they're going to dump right off and then they'll pump right up again and then they'll dump right off again that's literally what happens towards the end of it now i don't think we're quite there yet i think we're still somewhat early for me again i'm thinking more sometime around september this year to maybe march next year is where i see it kind of peaking out if we don't move into this super cycle that a lot of people have talked about so again for me i'm just going to take you know profits here and there not you know nothing too crazy too early and i'm not going to wait for the full-on last minute either and you know i've missed some of those gains so i'm going to stagger it but look i don't see anything happening till at least august september and even then you're going to see bitcoin peak out at whatever uh price that is and look if bitcoin's not even at a hundred thousand by sort of july august september then i don't think we're going into the peak of the cycle until much later in the year that's just the way it is i can't see bitcoin not getting to at least about a hundred and fifty thousand that'd be my bare minimum i really can't see that happening anymore originally i thought it would be 70 or eighty thousand, but i mean we're almost there we're probably going to be at you know eighty thousand next month but yeah i just i think a minimum 150,000 and then we'll wait and see if that 288,000 you know dollar bitcoin comes this season but that's the kind of things i'm looking out for but look see a green at the moment what's really pumping because everything's pumping by the looks of it all right dogecoin out of nowhere good lord uh xdc network xrp's up there eos iost bitcoin v chain polygon i spoke about these the other day i mean v chain's just been you know on an absolute rip tear so i probably wouldn't be buying into it at the moment polygon had formed a nice base and now it looks like it's just you know moving even further off there so very very nice i mean look even tron ethereum classic cardano getting back near old all-time highs a dollar fifty and again you know people are talking about three to five to maybe even an eight dollar cardano at the peak of this cycle so we'll have to wait and see you know chain link that's got to be nearly setting new all-time highs stellar doing well cosmos Sirecoin, you know litecoin you know pretty much everything is doing fairly well right now and that is a cause for a bit of concern because it doesn't stay like this forever it could quickly turn around tomorrow and we have a really big uh correction i don't think that's going to happen but that's totally possible right what's not done so well pretty much nothing pundi x is down again it already had its big massive pump but it does look like it's kind of leveling out anyway uh dent harmony chills i mean again Ch chilies had you know this mad pump so i mean it's still up you know for the week it's just down in 24 hours same with engine you know it seems like it's really flattened off there we'll have to wait and see whether that lasts i think there's a lot of upside left to so many of these altcoins but i think we're going to start getting close to the point now i really think eighty thousand dollars is going to be that point where we start to see brutal corrections we're going to see you know 20 30 percent corrections in bitcoin uh, if it doesn't happen at 80 i think it definitely happens around that hundred thousand i couldn't imagine it's going to be easy for us to get through that hundred thousand dollar mark that really is going to be uh something that's significant and I, I think in the 90s the nervous 90s as we say in cricket terms we're probably going to have a heavy dump maybe going from ninety thousand all the way back down to nearly fifty thousand and then that will be that kind of repeat of 2013 now that may not happen and look it might not even be the nervous 90s it might jump over a hundred thousand and get to about a hundred and four hundred and five thousand and make everyone think you know not this is going to continue to go and then it happens or look it may not even happen at all but they're just the things that i'm considering i really feel like somewhere around the hundred thousand dollar mark we're going to have some fairly big resistance and a fairly big correction but 
look, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, and I'm, you know, and I will be wrong again. And I don't mind saying that. Again, never financial advice. It's just my personal opinion from being in the space for a while. So the gains, I mean, they were pretty good, and the losses, they're almost sort of non-existent. I mean, obviously, Pundi X, that's uh, some pullback, but nothing, that's really almost sideways. From where it started in the week to where it is now, it's kind of sideways movement. It's already sort of lost a fair bit, but it had such massive gains before. So the Bitcoin chart, here we go. We'll come back to this, but this is what I want to talk about. So we got to come back. And we got to get to 2000. So this is what I'm talking about. In 2013, had this big peak, and then it had a fairly hefty correction. So, I mean, let's have a look. What was that kind of correction? That was... A 74% correction basically and that's not even all of it so it had a 70% correction to then only go on and boost up another sorry we'll get rid of that to boost up another 300% now I'm not saying we're gonna get the same so this had to go through a 74 I'd say nearly 80% correction to then go another 354% from that peak, not from down here. I mean, let's have a look what that is. That would be absolutely crazy. So if you even got in there, 1600%. So are we going to see something similar to this? As opposed to the 2017, I mean, there were peaks and troughs, but there wasn't just this one really, really big one. There was... Uh, a, a multitude of sort of sell-offs there before it got to this really crazy full parabolic stuff so that's what I'm looking for at the moment now we don't know if it's going to play out exactly the same this time but this is where we were just the other day and like I said we were in this kind of zone here we we're just traveling on the top of it and look we peaked off almost perfectly and now we are up 63,000 nearly getting close to 64,000 so very very interesting for Bitcoin again is this going to be a bit of a fake out and a sell-off tomorrow I don't think so I really do think we're finally you know gotten through this consolidation period and now we're making the next leg up but we just need to keep in mind that maybe that's not correct and it is a fake out we've had plenty of fake outs before I mean this right here excuse me is a bit of a fake out so they, they do happen, but uh, yeah, I just get the feeling like we probably will make another couple of legs up. And really, again, like I said, for me, I'm looking for sort of 80,000. This is where I'm sort of thinking we're going to get to. Now, again, we might meet the resistance a little bit before 80,000, so it could come at 77,000, 76,000, 79,000. It might, again, fake out a little bit and get up to nearly 81,000 and then... Uh, have that kind of pullback but I do I do think we'll probably have you know I think this is a point where we probably start to have some of those traditional 20 30 percent pullbacks but if we don't get it at 80,000 I think this $100,000 mark will be almost guaranteed but again never financial advice just my opinion that's what I'm really looking out for I think the retracement from that 100,000 mark will be brutal because a lot of people will be happy to take money at around about 100,000 Again, time will tell, could be completely wrong. Who knows? We'll wait and see. All right, so some stories. I've definitely come across some interesting ones. So South Korea's largest bank joins Hedera and Hashgraph's governing council. So hopefully I say this right. Shinhan Bank, South Korea's largest financial institution by total asset, has joined the governance council overseeing the Hedera network. In an April, April 14th announcement, Shin, Shin Han announced it had become the largest, the latest member, sorry, not the largest, the latest member of the Hedera Governing Council to expand its efforts in the field of digital transformation. Hedera touts its Hashgraph as an enterprise-grade blockchain platform capable of processing thousands of transactions per second. I did have Hedera Hashgraph and it just didn't perform well enough, so I sold out. Uh, and of course, as soon as I, not as soon as it has, because it definitely took a while, but now it's performing outstandingly well. So, you know, lessons learned. Sometimes you just simply got to hold the, the, you know, the diamond hands, they do the best. But look, again, 
I didn't really lose a whole lot because I took the money out of that and I made a profit on Hedera Hashgraph and put it into other things that did pretty well as well. So it's a bit of a, so, you know, catch 52. Yeah, I probably could have made some, you know, of the current gains that they've had, but I would have missed out on the gains that the other ones had. So, yeah. In between on how I feel about that, and I'm, you know, it's hard to know whether I've lost money or I actually made more money by diversifying out of it. Micro strategy. So their price, uh, their stock price starts to soar again. But in saying that, it has still uh, come down a fair way from its old all-time high. So MSTR rallied by as much as 10% on Tuesdays, and 10% is a lot in stocks. Just one day after an SEC filing showed that non-employee board members will be paid in Bitcoin. All right, now, even with the latest run-up in price, uh, MicroStrategy stocks remains well below all-time highs reached in early February. The stock peaked at $1,315 on Feb 8th before pulling back to sub-$1,000 levels. Now that Bitcoin is starting to get on a move again, watch these stock prices start to go up. The only reason they started to come down is because Bitcoin got into its uh, accumulation phase. Because you can see right here, on February the 8th, before it started to pull back. Where's February the 8th? Just a little bit before here. So again, we're going to go back to around about here. And again, this is where it really started to just kind of range. It wasn't just simply going up. And that's where people got a little bit bored of Bitcoin. And they're like, oh, this is probably it. It's the top, rah, rah, rah. Not understanding that the top doesn't look like this. The top looks, again, it's parabolic. So that's what's happened. And now that Bitcoin will start to move, and it'll be the same with Tesla. Similar thing happened to Tesla. There were people in saying that you know, Tesla needed to sell their Bitcoin now because it had you know, kind of reached its peak and all the rest of it. And I don't think Tesla will ever really sell their Bitcoin because it's unlikely to ever go down below the price that they bought it for. I think they got in you know, something like $37,000. I just, yeah, I'm not sure Bitcoin will ever go down that low again. And look, if it does, all they've got to do is hold. I'm sure they've done their homework like most of you have and I have. Four years time, no matter what price you bought it for, it's most likely going to be worth substantially more than whatever price you bought it for, based on history repeating itself. And so far, it, again, it doesn't completely repeat, but geez, it rhymes. It's very, very similar. So micro strategy stocks, I think they're going to go straight back up again, in all fairness. All right, Polkadot and Cosmos, they've gotten together. So Polkadot and Cosmos connect as Plasm, I think that's how you say it. yeah, Plasm and Secret Network. I've spoke about these before. They released Bridge MVP. So Plasm Network and Secret Network, two projects based on Polkadot and Cosmos respectively, have launched the first iteration of, uh, of a bridge to connect the two ecosystems, each representing a different layer zero protocol. So the bridge uh, deployed on Tuesday on Plasm's testnet allows users to transfer assets between Plasm Network and Secret Network, allowing them to enjoy transaction privacy and the use of Secret Swap, the first automated market maker exchange on Secret Network. Now, the bridge would allow Plasm users to benefit from Secret Network's privacy layer, which is based on hardware guarantees offered by Trusted Execution Environment, or TEE Cells. So I have spoke about Secret Network. I love what they're doing. And look, they're going to be building a bridge you know, to Ethereum as well and a number of other platforms. Uh, likewise, REN will be doing uh, similar kind of things. So this is really, really uh, good news. And look, the Secret Network token has been doing pretty well of late. It's had a fairly steep correction. Uh, I think, you know, a couple of hundred percent from the peak uh, to its sort of low this time round. But it's already started to pick up pace again as well. I mean, let's go and have a look. Let's see. Uh so secret network. So it's up 9.2%. But I mean, look, last 30 days, it just continues to go up. It did have a fairly uh, corrective pullback. That's 24 hours. Let's go here, the last three months. So there we can see it got up quite high and it pulled back right down. And I was telling people about this. I said, it looks like it's kind of bottomed out. Uh, and, you know, 
found its correction point and really this is kind of where the correction point was and that was on the 26th of march so not too long ago and since then i mean it's just making new waves up now it hasn't quite got to its old all-time high of what was that about sort of five dollars something uh, but I do think it's going to uh, capture that and go well beyond that. So congratulations to both, uh, both uh, Plasm and the Secret Network. Uh, and again, interoperability, that is really, you know, the it, it's the thing. I, I'm, I can't think of the word I'm looking for. But, you know, once we get through interoperability and all the rest of it, uh, you know, that opens up the space to just so many more things. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, I ha if I'm not Ethereum, then I can't use Cosmos. And if I'm not Cosmos, you know, then I can't use uh, Tezos and, you know, Ethereum and all that kind of stuff. Interoperability, it's the, you know, it, it's the one thing, that and scalability, in all fairness. Scalability more so, but then interoperability. You know, once we can interoperate between chains without any issues and we have that scalability, you know, literally as they say it's to the moon and beyond after that for cryptocurrencies and just blockchain technology in general all right the cryptocurrency market the entire market has got to 2.2 trillion dollars and has now surpassed that of apple i mean apple is big it's a behemoth it's up there and now the cryptocurrency market let's go back to here 2.29 something trillion 2.95 was 2.94 so it's already added about a billion dollars in the time that this video has been going so again it just continues to grow and you know surpassing apple now and again i think we've still got a lot further to go never financial advice i must say that all right exodus wallet so i don't know if any of you use exodus wallet uh i use it on occasions i have stuff in and out there uh uh, on yeah on occasions depending uh and, and i like it it's a pretty good wallet it's just you know not my preferred wallet that's all but they have actually released an ipo or released stocks so exodus the creator of popular non-custodial crypto wallet has raised 60 million dollars since april the 8th by selling stock in the company it's calling uh, the sale Sorry, it's calling the sale, which was cleared by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the largest regulated crypto public offering ever. There we go. Last week, the company put $75 million in shares up for sale at $27 a piece. Now, this is interesting though. However, instead of accepting U.S. dollars, Exodus only took a trio of crypto, uh, crypto, <laughs> oh God, what a stuff up crypto assets commonly stored in its wallet so it only accepted bitcoin ethereum and usd stablecoin which is basically us dollars anyway really but you know again another crypto firm selling stocks very very interesting and i'm guessing they're doing pretty well but interesting that they only wanted to take bitcoin ethereum and usdc for it so yeah another sort of ipo or you know crypto stock out there and available so coinbase obviously their uh, ipo is tomorrow and they have awarded their employees with 100 shares each now this is interesting so when coinbase goes public on wednesday which is tomorrow in american time the list of people eligible to cash in will be longer than expected that's thanks to a recent decision by the company to hand out 100 shares to its approximate 1,700 employees around the world. The giveaway means that every full-time employee of the company is poised to become $25,000 richer. That is, you know, that, say what you want about Coinbase, but they looked after their employees here. Now that is based on a $250 reference price set by the NASDAQ Stock Exchange on Tuesday. Now the actual price at which the stock begins to trade, however, could be significantly higher or lower. So look, if it's lower than that, then obviously not 25,000, but either way, it's still sort of free money. That's what their employees have got. No one's turning that down. And imagine if it goes way higher. Some people have been talking about $300, $400 a share. Well, obviously that substantially goes up. You know, Then we're having people you know, making nearly $50,000 uh, if they sell it. And then you know, they could sell some and hold some. Really depends on what they're going to do, but you know, good on Coinbase for looking after their employees, and particularly employees have probably been there for a while, and you know, really been part of building Coinbase. All right, Ripple CTO. He says it's probably seriously time 
uh, it's probably time to seriously consider selling some crypto. And look, I, I wouldn't disagree with that either. So David Schwartz, he's come out and said, if you have life-changing amounts of cryptocurrency, please take some time to seriously consider selling some to reduce your risk and exposure, he tweeted, before adding, uh, this is not any kind of prediction about what the market will do. Now, yeah, if you're in profit, you're not going to lose any money by selling. You're seriously not. You may lose unrealized gains, but that's all they are. They're unrealized. They're never real until you sell. At some stage, you've got to sell to make those profits. So, yeah, if you've made a like a bucket load of money, yeah, absolutely. Take some off the table. It doesn't have to be like 50% of it or 75% of it. It can be 10%. Just take 10% of whatever you've made and then have that on the side for the next bear market bear market, because that's where the big money is going to be made if you haven't made that seriously big crazy money this time. You got to take some profits bit by bit, not sell off everything because we never know when it's going to end and it could be a super cycle, but start taking those profits because when the next bear market comes, and it will. It's going to come. That's just a, it's a matter of time. We just don't know when. But when the bear market comes next time, if you can get in at the right time and the right projects for the right price, then you really will make that life-changing money, you know. If you've, let's say you've put in $5,000 this time, and not everyone can, I understand that, you know, $5,000 is a lot of money to some people, and to other people it's chump change, you know. I'd love to be able to sit here and say $5,000 is chump change for me. It's not, it's a lot of money for me. But you may be able to put $5,000 into something at the very bottom of the bear market, and if you're lucky enough to sell at the peak of that, you know, the next cycle, that $5,000 could, you know, be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Could be. No guarantees, but people have done it and many people have done it. And so that's what it is. If you don't have enough for life-changing money now, then fair enough. I mean, we're not at the end of the cycle yet. You still may get there, but geez, take some profits along the way. And if you don't make the life-changing money this time, at least have money set up for the bottom of the bear market next time. You just got to get into you know uh, a good project that's you know seriously undervalued and plenty will be at the bottom of the next bear market and then you just got to basically hold and if you're lucky and find something new that still hasn't you know got a whole stack of history behind it and isn't going to be super expensive you know to get into like you know if you could put five thousand dollars into something that's only 10 or 15 cents per coin and that can then go up to you know 20 30 40 50 dollars a coin you're going to do better than putting that five thousand dollars into something that's 20 30 dollars a coin now and only maybe goes up to two to four hundred dollars a coin you know what i mean but again that's it's not to say that you've just got to find the lowest cap coin uh for the cheapest price that's not how it is but if you were lucky enough to find a good one if you can get it cheaper, then the gains are going to be so much bigger. If it's further down, uh, further down outside of the top 100 and things like that, that's where the truly life-changing money can be made with small amounts of money. With bigger amounts of money, you can still make life-changing money, but you just do it in the safer stuff in the top 100. And for me, that's where pretty much I've invested in. I've hardly invested in anything outside the top 100. Secret Network, though, I, I invested in that, and that was you know well outside uh, outside the 300 top 300 but it was kind of a fork of an old coin that i really liked enigma and so that's how i got into it but you know david swartz he's been around for a couple of cycles now i, I would have to agree if you got plenty of money don't be afraid to take some profits again everyone's worried that oh but what happens if it 10x is from here well you, as long as you haven't sold everything you can still take advantage of that 10x but what happens if it doesn't 10x from here and it drops 50%? Then you missed out. Again, those the unrealized gains are that. They will always and forever be unrealized until you sell. And I'd rather make some profits and miss out on you know some profits than not sell and completely miss out on any profits. That's what you need to be mindful of. All right, moving on, last but not least. All right, so Ethereum Hub Consensus raises $65 million from JP Morgan, MasterCard, UBS, and others. So Consensus, which is an Ethereum development operation headquartered in Brooklyn, New York, has raised $65 million from financial institutions JP Morgan, MasterCard, and UBS, as well as leading firms in the decentralized finance space. 
So having toughed it out through the crypto winter of 2018-19, today's bullish fundraising announcement is further evidence consensus has found its footing. The firm has now been successfully uh, restructured into two parts, a core software business, so CSI, and an investment and uh, incubation arm known as Consensus Mesh. So again, this is big players starting to put, you know, fairly big money into the actual governance of Ethereum and things like that. So the money's still coming, you know. These big guys aren't going to put in money and this kind of money at the peak. They, they, you know, they may not be the brightest sparks in the world when it comes to cryptocurrencies, but they're not dumb money either. They would have done their research and gone, right, you know, this is still a good time to, you know, get into all these sort of things. Uh, you know, you're not getting into the absolute peak when you're going to, you know, then you know, two weeks later, suffer a 50, 60, 70% uh, brutal bear market. Don't get me wrong, a bear market will come, but obviously they're putting this kind, this kind of money in. It's not coming just yet. All right, look, that's it from me. Things are looking pretty good in the market at the moment. I mean, that is a sea of green. It is looking absolutely fantastic. And this Bitcoin dominance, my God. It just gets lower and lower at the moment. It's really starting to drop fairly fast. I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow we're under 50%. And again, Bitcoin can still be going up with the dominance dropping. And that's how you know you're starting to get into that fever pitch kind of end. Now, not the very end, but it's we're at that we're getting up to the last part of the cycle in all fairness when bitcoin price goes up but its dominance is dropping and you know things are just really starting to pump yeah you know you're getting close and like i said i really do think somewhere around that hundred thousand dollar mark is where we're going to get a really big correction and it'll probably be by the looks of it at the moment somewhat similar to that 2013 model i think we'll have a brutal correction uh, it'll shake a lot of people out and then it'll probably pump even higher again but not financial advice i could be completely wrong all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another we should all be on that gain train at the moment. 6.9%, nearly 7% total market cap increase. That is really, really good. And I'll see you next time.